When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. Isaiah 41.10 Hey guys! <laughs> so, waking up this morning, I did not think that I was going to be doing this. <laughs> um... I have had a story on my heart for quite some time that the Lord has walked me through some pretty intense things in my life. And today, apparently, he is encouraging me to share my story with a whole bunch of people. And I know you all are brothers and sisters in Christ, so it's all good, but I'm still laughing because I'm like, <laughs> this is not what I thought I was going to be doing today. Uh, so, um, a little background. So, I have gone through two bouts of thyroid cancer, and one was my first year in college as an undergrad, and my second was actually two months after honeymooning with my husband. <laughs> and it's kind of like, hey, babe, guess what we get to do for the first few years of our marriage? Um, we get to focus on bringing my health back to balance and restor restoration and go through some really intense things together, including surgeries and recovery. So, yeah, that was in 2010. Um, then fast forward into 2015, I just completed all of my courses for my master's in counseling. So I was just finishing up grad school. And to celebrate, my family and I decided to take our first real family vacation, and we decided to go to Mexico. So I was overjoyed, super excited. My husband and I were in Mexico for our honeymoon, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to the ocean. I'm so excited to be back in the warm water. And I was so stoked about scuba and snorkeling and all the wonderful things that we had planned. So... Uh, let's see. It's very important that you know that, okay, um, two weeks, maybe three weeks before our trip, I felt very, very strongly the Lord telling me, you need to get medical coverage for your family. Yeah. Lovely, right? So I'm thinking, what does that mean? And the first thing that came in mind was my stepdaughter is going to get stung by a jellyfish or step on something she shouldn't in the ocean. And I just figured that we were covering her. And I really had no idea <laughs> why I was saying yes to this additional um, expenditure, if you will, but I certainly said yes to it in a heartbeat. And what was so cool is that my husband said yes to it as well. It wasn't like a, uh, are you sure we have to do this? He just said, okay, yeah, let's do that. So peace of mind uh, going into vacation, right? Priceless. <laughs> um, so, okay, a lot of things I should have known better than to say yes to. One was taking a red-eye flight to Mexico from Colorado. Uh, I value sleep. I don't do plane rides very well. Uh, I have had a history of lots of uh, car sickness or motion sickness, if you will, which, by the way, happens frequently when someone has thyroid disorder or, like me, no thyroid at all. Uh, so I was loaded up on acupuncture uh, and I had acupuncture seeds in my ears um, to make sure that I would have anti-nausea points covered. And my dear massage therapist husband was holding points for me on my hands and on my arms. So I felt like I was in a pretty good space for the first half hour or so of the flight. I was super tired. I remember that for sure. Um, but I remember being just so over the top excited about what we were going to get to experience for the next week together in Mexico. And that's, that's where my, my mind was. Um, so let's see. Uh, the flight was traumatic. <laughs> yeah, I just, I can't, I can't beat around the bush about it. 
it was very apparent that something was going wrong in my body and in my mind within about half an hour because I was so above and beyond sick um, compared to anything else I'd ever experienced on a plane before and my emotions were all over the place which is totally not me uh, generally I'm a pretty cool collected person and I can have a good amount of control over what's happening emotionally but I was all over the place um, I remember feeling really bad for like everybody on the plane ride near us because I was just weeping and I kept saying over and over like my nausea my nausea because it was so crazy intense like think about the worst nausea you've ever had and then maybe to the 10th degree <laughs> it was insane it was crazy intense and it was all I could think about so my husband who had originally planned to be sleeping like my stepdaughter was next to us um, he was up holding lots of points for me on my body trying to figure out how to keep my nausea down how to get me back online how to get my brain back online and it became very apparent by the end of our flight that none of that was going to be happening and that something was going on that was very serious. So I um, got a wheelchair ride off of the airplane and into customs and we flew through customs because I was headed to the doctor's office. Yay! First thing on vacation and I'm going to a medical office in the airplane or in the airport in Mexico. Woohoo! Great! Uh huh? Um, I remember even barely being aware of the humidity and the heat that was uh, so just like a wall coming off the plane. I remember being barely aware of that so I was pretty out of it. Uh, let's see. So lying there on the cold table having a doctor um, who actually turned out to be a medical assistant, so he didn't know a whole ton about what to do. He was triaging and saying, yeah, you know, she's probably just really car or really plain sick and dehydrated, so let's make sure that we get some water in her and let's give her a banana to make sure that blood sugar is um, okay and let's send you on your way. And I remember the water going straight through me and, and me just looking at my stepdaughter and saying hey I, I need to use the restroom and she's like alright I'll come with you she was on the other side of the stall and she was asking me questions while I was um, in the bathroom and I was not responding and I remember oh, I remember being on the floor of the the stall in the airport bathroom and being totally in my mind but not in my body so let me explain um my body was paralyzed i really couldn't move and i remember thinking this is concerning i can't move my body but it was like it was this logical weird place in my brain that I was. I wasn't scared. I wasn't really feeling anxious. I was just like, huh, this is weird. How curious. And that, in retrospect, um, was a great indicator that I had tripped a um, vagal kind of response in my body and my mind of my body shutting down and telling me that something was very wrong. And the body goes into a vagal response in different levels when we get to a point of saying, okay, we're experiencing something that is similar to, to death. Um, and so our body shuts down to protect us, and our brain shuts down to protect us, and it, it's crazy. So there I was in this shutdown mode. My dear stepdaughter is crawling underneath the stall to find me just out of it and my vision was just fixated at some point in space and I was pretty much checked out. So what I remember is being in the back of the ambulance with my husband holding my hand. I remember heightened energy and anxiety, like palpable 
in the back of the ambulance and thinking, um, are all these people concerned about me? And I was concerned about me for sure, but I wasn't scared. It was just like, oh, this sucks. This is not the way I want to spend my, my first day <laughs> of vacation in Mexico. Um, stepdaughter's up front, so she was kind of buffered against what was going on in the back, thank God. Um, I remember my husband saying, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me, uh, just over and over and over. And there was desperation and there was fear in his voice and he is a calm, under pressure kind of guy. So when I heard his voice and the intonation, I was, I was getting a little nervous, honestly. Um, the nausea was out of control and I remember thinking, I've got an IV and it's just fluids, why can't you give me an anti-nausea medication? But they kept saying that they had to wait until um, lots of tests could be run to figure out what's going on. So I was feeling frustrated, to say the least, because I just wanted to feel better. I really, really wanted the nausea to be gone. So and then my vitals decided to bottom out and I was in distress in a lot of different ways. Um, I remember thinking okay now is the time to be praying and so I closed my eyes and I tried to get as quiet inside as I could and I just took a deep breath and I just said Lord if you want me to be with you today, I am all about that. And I know that you're going to take care of my family and I trust you and I want your will to be done in this. Um, I want you to be glorified in this. And pretty much as soon as I said, amen, my vitals started coming back up and my husband was not squeezing my hand as hard as he had been and um, my vision was coming back online a little bit, my head was a little less cloudy, and I was thinking, I still feel awful, but it seems that this is not my time. This is not my time to go. And so then all I was thinking about was get rid of this nausea, please, oh please. I remember kind of coming to in uh, a hospital room all by myself in Mexico and what was so intense and so supernatural um, I still laugh about this so as an undergrad in college and in high school I took some Spanish um, I knew a little bit okay let's just say a little bit and in that moment, hearing all these voices around me of medical folks, uh, I was comprehending probably a good 70% of what was being said. And I remember even being able to express as my language system came back on, um, I was able to express in Spanish what I needed. Um, I was able to express where I was hurting, what wasn't okay, asking where my husband was. Uh, beyond basics, let's say, I was able to speak in Spanish and it was, it was, it was so cool. Um, so all these people who only spoke Spanish were able to communicate with me. I was able to communicate with them. Uh, husband and stepdaughter came in to, to obviously say hi to me <laughs> after I was back online, after my brain was back online, and an angel of a nurse came in and finally administered anti-anxiety medication, which worked within, you know, 10 minutes, if that. And so I was able to breathe again, and I was able to rest, and... My husband, um, man, I remember seeing love and relief just wash through him. 
as I was telling him that I'd been speaking to people in Spanish and that I was going to be okay and that I knew that I was going to be okay. Um, he came in and he said, how, how did you know? How did I know what? How did you know to cover our family with medical insurance? And he was asking because he was just in awe. Um, he got a hold of the company that was taking care of us and let them know what had happened. And they said, um, we're going to cover everything at 100%. Um, oh, I'm still in awe. I'm still in awe of how the Lord went before us into that. And I get choked up because when I think about the medical bill that we would have been faced with <laughs> um, had he not spoken to my heart through the Holy Spirit and had I not said yes to that in obedience. Um, wow. So anyway, oh, we then were told that I wouldn't be able to eat much of anything for the entire vacation and that I would need to just lay low and probably not do a whole lot of activity. And you know, it is so important um, to not take someone else's word as truth, especially, especially when it's when they're talking about your life and your body and your well-being and there was something inside me that rose up against that and said I am NOT aligned with that I'm not going to accept that is my truth I'm gonna have the best family vacation ever and I'm going to experience everything and I just felt like I was given a, a second lease on life um, a, a second beginning and I don't think it was more than four hours after being discharged from the hospital and we were there for a long time um, that I was I was eating and I was walking around and I was feeling absolutely wonderful um, there really wasn't a residual and it wasn't until I remember it wasn't until the following morning when I looked down and saw where the IV had been that my brain went, whoa, <laughs> you just went through something crazy intense and um, it was the closest probably to death that you've experienced uh, and you might want to process this a little bit. But I thought, you know what, I can compartmentalize this and I can just go through this incredible experience with my family. and. If I need to process it, I can do that later. So that's exactly what I did. I had an amazing family vacation. I'm talking like zip lining, hiking, snorkeling, all these different adventures that we were on. And the whole time I was eating like a queen, seriously, at the resort. Um, it was just incredible. And after we got back, I remember processing a little bit with my husband. I certainly remember processing with my Christian counselor at the time. And uh, that was really, really helpful because what I realized is that I'd gone through something pretty intense. And it was important to recognize that and it was important to hold space for that and say, what was that about? And I remember my counselor looked at me and said, well, did anybody ever figure out what happened to your body? Like what was actually going on? And I kind of laughed and said, eh, no, not really, but it's done now and I feel great. So I guess it doesn't really matter a whole lot. Well, fast forward just a smidge, right? Um, I think it was a couple months after getting back from Mexico. And um, I had many family and friends saying the exact same thing. Like, you need to get to the bottom of what happened to your, to your system because this was, this was not normal. And what was crazy was 
they took so many labs and did so many tests at the hospital in Mexico and nobody could figure out what was going on. Everybody had a theory. Like I remember my husband being so patient as each professional, each specialist came in and said, this is what we think happened. This is what we think is going on. But nobody had any idea of what was actually happening. So I thought, yeah, probably wise to figure out what actually went down and to prevent it from ever happening again because thanks but no thanks to that experience as a repeat. Uh, so my husband was being interviewed by a functional medicine chiropractor who is also a man of faith and I remember sitting during the interview, and this was our final interview, so he was kind of like interviewing the family at this point in time, the doctor was, and he was looking at my neck, and he was looking at my thyroid scars, and he said, you know, it looks like you've been through quite a bit with your thyroid. I can see some scars. Your surgeon was amazing, so they're barely noticeable, but, you know, I work with people with thyroid issues all the time, so I, I can notice these things and pick up on these things. And he said, I just wonder if you are in a place in your life where you would like to figure out why um, things keep happening. And also, if you're aligning with this idea of being on thyroid medication the rest of your life, or if you want to look at um, ways that the body can actually heal, repair, and restore itself without the use of medication. Say what? Are, are, you, are, are you kidding me right now? And I remember my spirit just jumping inside and like lighting up from the inside out and going, yes, yes, I want to know, yes. Um, so my husband was hired to be massage therapist at this particular uh, clinic location and I rapidly was under care for the team with the team and they were sitting there uh, mulling over all of the labs that I'd had taken in Mexico and I remember the doctor looking at me and saying okay so you do realize that your body was shutting down on multiple levels and that this was a perfect storm medically speaking, of activity. Um, many people would not have survived this. And I'm like, mm, no, because all the people who came alongside me at that time were saying they didn't know what was going on. He's like, oh, I can tell you <laughs> that there were a lot of things going on. But primarily, your body was attacking your thyroid and your body was attacking other parts of your body, and that is autoimmune response. Um, but also, you were suffering from low, low, low glucose and anemia, and a host of other things were going on at the same time in your system. I was like, what? Are you kidding me? So guys, I, I say all of this, um, because it is so critical for us to, to challenge and to question what is being told. Uh, even if that person has a lab coat on, even if that person has a bajillion credentials behind their last name, I don't care. Asking the Lord what is true is so critical. And this medical appointment that I just described set me on a path to health and healing and restoration uh, that's been going on for several years now. Um, and I'm certainly still not where I want to be, not where I, where I would hope I would be by now, but it's a slow process. And when I think about all of the decisions that I made, uh, Oh my goodness, I was that little girl who would just eat the bare minimum of my food so that I could go into desserts. 
which my parents always had an amazing dessert ready for me, especially after dinner. So I would eat just bare minimum, I would go right into dessert, and then I might go back into the main meal, but I was just all about dessert. Um, so when this medical team looked at me and said, hey, uh, this is going to be a opportunity for you to make some new decisions about what you're putting in your body on a regular basis. Um, I got a little scared, to be honest. Um, so when people look at my life now and say, how for three years have you been on a gluten-free, dairy-free, um, avoiding GMOs, mostly organic, no soy, no corn, um, low sugar kind of nutrition experience. Like how, how do you do that? Um, I can only say because of the grace of God, because I still crave, um, those different things, but I recognize that one of the reasons my body was in such incredible distress in Mexico was because all of my decisions had caught up with me finally. And also there was a lot of stress regarding being in graduate school. Um, so all of that was an accumulative effect in my body and in my mind, which equated to everything just wanting to kind of collapse and shut down. Since then, my body has come to a place where I have not had to be on thyroid medication for long periods of time because my thyroid was actually regrowing and restoring and replenishing itself in a healthy way. And that is such an incredible miracle for sure. Um, and with the prescribed nutrients and with everything that I was doing on a regular basis, being very careful about what I was eating um, and how I was preparing food and all of that, my body was coming together and saying, yeah, okay, I'm going to get back into a place of homeostasis and balance. So if you're in a place where you are looking for um, the why behind symptoms that you're experiencing, if you are sitting here at home listening to this video and there's a part of you that is resonating deeply with what I'm saying, uh, there's a reason for that and you can trust that. And maybe um, jumping online and looking for a functional medicine chiropractor near you would be a good stepping point. Most people uh, offer a free consultation so you can just sit down and um, set aside some time to look over labs and information and your symptoms and say, okay, what could be causing this? Our medical system primarily in Western medicine is on the medical model of let's look at a symptom, let's identify the symptom, let's get you a diagnosis, let's get you on medication that then covers up the symptom. But what are we actually doing at that point in time? We're not looking at the root cause of it, right? So, um, gosh, I just resonate so much with this methodology of looking at the root cause. That's what I do with my with my my counseling clients as well is say, okay, what is driving this for you? What is the underlying root of this for you? That's what we need to be addressing, not the symptoms. And if you're in a spot where you're saying, you know what, I really have never experienced this peace um, that surpasses all understanding. I've, I've never experienced this calm inside. And I keep going through these storms of life and I keep walking through these fires, but it feels like I'm walking through it all alone and just getting more worn out and more weary and more exhausted and more anxious and more depressed or whatever it is you're experiencing. I encourage you, I invite you to consider what it would look like to receive the gift that our Lord has given to every single person in his love. Um, and look up John 3.16 and know that Jesus is here and he's here for you and he wants a deep, true, intimate relationship with you and he wants your heart and he wants to 
He wants to guide and he wants to guard your life. And that does not mean that things are going to be hunky-dory and easy-peasy. It means that as things get tough, you know that you will not be separated from his love and that no matter what happens on this side, um, in this life, it can't break you, it can't destroy you. And that's the peace. That's the peace I'm talking about, which is out of pure love, pure relationship. And if this is something that interests you, um, you know, it's so easy. All you do is say yes to his gift on the cross and you say, you know what? I want to know you. I want to be in deeper relationship with my creator and with you. And I'll choose to say yes to you. And I choose to recognize that all of my decisions up to this point, all of the things that I've done that have hurt myself or someone else, that you've taken those things upon the cross. And so I repent of everything that has brought me up to this point and I choose to have a renewal in my life and my spirit and my body and my mind. And I wanna be a new person, a, a, new, cre a new creation um, in Christ Jesus. And you just accept his gift, that's it. Um, and then you go and you get plugged into a local church. You go and you start talking with other people in context of community and you share your story like I'm sharing mine today and you live a, a different life and you'll have that peace that surpasses all understanding. So I hope and I pray that there's a little piece of my story that resonates with your spirit today and that lights you up and that makes you say yes, um, maybe to a new health journey, maybe yes to Jesus. And I just say all of this in love and uh, just want to thank you so much for taking the time to spend 30 minutes of your day with me. So reach out at any point in time with comments and I take care. All right, take care. Bye-bye.